have to tell you there will, I say, never be an end to the debate. There will always be those who will try to destroy Medicare in this country as they have episodically. And so it's up to us to carry the fight for the expansion of this great Canada Health Act and to make that commitment tonight. It's very clear that Mr. Harper's um, view of Canada is that um, the federal government has nothing to do with health care whatsoever. So there's less and less national vision every day. But notwithstanding this, there are reforms being implemented in some places that prove that we can, in fact, reform our system around what many of us refer to as Tommy Douglas's second stage of Medicare. Those who implemented our Medicare system knew 40 some years ago that we had to look at the future, we have to look at preventive care if we wanted to keep it. People forget that we didn't always have Medicare and what it was like and it's those stories that we need to talk about to, a, to future generations. It's vital I think that Canadians feel that they are connected to a healthcare system that responds to them as people and that doesn't uh, require them to pull their credit cards out at the door. And I think that Canadians at times take for granted that fundamental principle and think that we could never end up with a system in which their wealth determined their access to health care, but we, we are up against that tension all the time and we should never take it for, for granted. Here's a model worth taking seriously. It's a community clinic and a health care co-op. It's run by the people who get the service and it houses all sorts of health care professionals working together in teams to meet people's needs. If we want Medicare to be effective, and if we want it to be more affordable, we need more places like this. And if we succeed in primary health care, we'll have a healthier community, we won't need so many hospitals, we'll be able to keep our elderly people out of long-term care facilities, and it'll be a better deal for all. Through being a member of the clinic and, uh, and, and using the services there, attending the meetings, getting the publications, uh, there's a there's a lot of uh, uh, a, a lot of education work that makes me as a member a lot more knowledgeable about my health and about my needs and what what I can do. We have to remind Canadians healthcare is more than hospitals. It's more than bricks and mortars. It's about prevention. It's about staying healthy. It's about the medication that a physician or a nurse practitioner prescribes to you. You need to be able to afford it. So we need a national pharma care program to do that. It's taking care of our seniors. What we do today is unfair to those who created the system. So we have to have a better home care program, better long-term care program. And then the shame of Canada is Aboriginal health. We have to do something and that can't wait for the future. It has to start today. Another area is home care. I think uh, particularly in Saskatchewan, we started off with a fairly good home care program, but we've seen it deteriorate as um, employers, as regions that pr provide health services are struggling to meet their budgets. Um, certainly it becomes the emergent and very acute care that gets the focus, diagnostics, and things like home care get set by the side. And I think if we're going to tr truly um, rejuvenate the system and look to the future, home care is another area that should be examined as part of the Canada Health Act. We also need to look at the issue of physician payment. Um, I'm not saying that fee-for-service needs to be banned by any means, but for most of the time in family practice, we want family doctors to be acting as consultants, actually that we want them to be working in collaborative practice with nurse practitioners and nurses and pharmacists and, and other providers. When we look at the high costs in the healthcare system, that pharmaceuticals is one thing that is driving those costs way up. And not everyone has access to um, a health plan such as nurses that I represent enjoy. There's many people that don't have that. And so how can we say that everyone has the same access to health care when that's a key part that's missing for some people? Well, my preferred Medicare for the future would first expand. We would have a national pharmacare pro program that both ensures that physicians, pharmacists and others uh, have the best information possible, unbiased information about which drugs are effective and which ones aren't, and everybody would be covered, which means that there would be millions of Canadians who would no longer have to make a choice between buying their groceries 
and filling their prescription. It's very clear that there are different standards of health in this country, even, even though we may not want to acknowledge that. And we need to look at uh, the social determinants of health. We need to look at housing. We need to look at good jobs. Those are the things that are going to improve us as a nation. And when we're all on the same level, that's when we, we can say that we've succeeded and we are a great nation. To me, the Canada Health Act is a floor. It's not a ceiling. It's the base upon which one builds uh, the healthcare system of the future. And what we as Canadian Doctors for Medicare are advocating for is, a con is this concept of a better Medicare. So uh, a healthcare system that continues to be founded on those same principles of the, of the Canada Health Act and that fundamental, most basic principle of equity of access, but that then builds upon that towards a higher quality system with improved access uh, and that is fiscally sustainable in the long term. When people say that it's unaffordable, uh, the reality is we can't afford not to fix this because it's an enormous cost to people's health and an even bigger cost to the economy when we don't address broader health needs because we are focusing so narrowly on hospitals and doctors. My vision is that um, we won't need the, a lot of the acute care uh, costly items that we do today on the same scale. We'll have a lot more professionals visiting people in their homes. We'll have a lot more clinics which are designed to, to do health promotion, health prevention. We will see more community health centres, we will have a pharmacare program and you will have Canadians uh, a lot healthier uh, because they will know the effect of chronic disease. What we have today is really just phase one of what the visionary leaders saw. We have to strengthen the medically necessary services, bring in pharmacare, home care, mental care, palliative care, the issues that I've talked about and others. And we need to do something else. We've got to start looking at the upstream of health care, early childhood development, the indicators of quality of life, issues such as standard of living, our health standards, the vitality of our communities, our education, the way we use our time, our participation in the democratic processes, the state of our arts, culture and recreation and the quality of our environment. All of these, together with when we're ill, means what it is to have a good health care system. And if you're a citizen who wants a different kind of system, who wants a health system alongside the sickness system, you're going to have to tell the politicians that that's what you're aiming for. We can do this. We can mobilize. And if we don't, the system's going to be in the hands of the interest groups. Big Pharma can decide how to conceive of health and how to organize health care, or you can. So let's get this job done. Let's invest in a healthier Canada. It's our duty as citizens, and if we succeed, it'll be better for all.